Well, the last speaker in that report was Jonathan Lukwobiri, President of Joy Youth Council, who this time joins us live you know, to discuss the deplorable state of the East-West Road and why it has remained uncompleted through successive administrations since 2006. Good afternoon. Great to have you on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon. So why do you think it's taken so long to complete this road, a project that has been awarded since 2006? What can be done to ensure that it is completed under this administration? Well, uh, the, the question as to why this road has remained uncompleted for 18 years after its first award is, is a puzzle that Nigeria needs to solve. But whether it is taking 18 years to complete, it's entirely a question that any serious government would need to unravel why this has happened just for a road that is 188 kilometers. Now, what I think that the government of President Tinubu must need, I mean, must do to complete that project first, that road, in terms of its value to the lives and people of the Niger Delta, those who are engaged in business activities, that's just the only economic route, the only road that connects the Niger Delta and the rest of the world. So its importance can't be overstated. But how it can be achieved, in my opinion, just requires a committed leadership to ensuring that funds deployed to contractors are monitored for effective delivery of this, this project. Now, the, the tragic experience of our people is beyond what Mounts can describe. There are people who have been on that road since last week, Friday. Today is Friday again. What kind of a business a nation or people in a nation can make to prosper when these minor things that could be fixed have defied all logic? So it's, it's pathetic. And that's why I'm using this medium to appeal to the minister for whatever the dynamics around this business, I mean, this, this road. We don't want the excuses anymore. We don't want the reasons why it's failing. We only want to know what can be done and done speedily. If you live within Bielsa, Potakot, and Wari, you can see the frustrations of people. A road that takes barely about one hour to cover now takes four five hours and you know the the danger beyond the the the, the loss of, of of economic time you also have the danger of insecurity arising from uh people who will aid people that are stuck in that spot of the road now people are forced to to create roads through communities that people never even knew existed in that place and already there are reports of where people have been waylaid and then uh, uh, goods and uh, uh, properties taken from people but the simple truth is that this failed spot that requires this urgent attention is just uh, around about 1.5 kilometers the only thing that is perhaps lacking is leadership to provide that direct directive that this is what we want get done. Whilst the, the Colvert is, is, is an, as an innovation introduced in order to allow water pass by the time the flood comes up. This is July. Everybody knows that July is already, by, by the report of NIMED, we are already aware that the flood will come in, in, in its fullest form. So excuses as to why the project is delayed. You can see how Colvert a single culvert takes like five weeks, I mean, uh, uh, five months to complete one culvert when we have several of them that must be completed. The, the, the road doesn't even stop in that Ahoda Okube axis. Even from the, the, the Potakot Eleme axis, it's also filled. We can't continue this way as a nation, especially when the entire resources that 
towards the rest of our nation comes from a region and that, that, that axis completely feels abandoned. It, for government to, to create that sense of belonging to a people, I don't think it's too much to ask. And this is our appeal here. Well said. Um, and another piece of this puzzle to put together is the amount that has been spent on the road in the last 18 years. The Obasanjo administration back in 2006 awarded 211 uh, billion naira for it. The Jonathan administration awarded 725.711 billion for it. And just recently, the Buhari, uh, Buhari administration in 2020 approved 19.67 billion naira. That is upwards of 956 billion naira. It doesn't seem like much is being shown for it. Should the investigations as to what happened with this money go along with the construction of the road in order to avoid a repeat of these past instances and the non-completion of the project? In my mind, as an Niger Delta and as, as, as a key stakeholder in a region, my interest is not how much has been spent there. That's the role of the security agencies to investigate why funds already deployed have not been effective. Our interest is fix the road and then you do the rest on your own. Today, for those who live in Abuja, everyone is happy because there's a massive turnaround in terms of the, the, the road infrastructure because people are seeing the road practically. It's not excuses we want to see. As a Niger Delta, if leaders continue to give excuses as to why failure is sustained, it's unacceptable. Our appeal is fix the road and then you fix your internal issues as to why uh, resources deployed are not being used effectively. This is, is it. that road, let me tell you, just as breath, human life depends on breath. That is how important the value, people of that region value that road. So you cannot extinguish the breath from a people and expect that people should continue to listen to the excuses you give for failure. It's unacceptable. That's why specifically we cried to the closest agency of development in our region, the NDDC. And incidentally, I'm happy that the MD gave a human face to it almost immediately after we did that. We are taking, this is the third time I'm, I'm leading a protest to that road peacefully. I don't want that place to become a hub for, for criminal activities where people who are stuck there are allowed to go through horrible experiences on account of insecurity. I'm happy that the NDDC led not just himself, the entire management of NDDC to that road. And what he saw, I'm, I'm sure, could never have been explained to, to him if he didn't personally witness that stuff. So I'm happy that he has making not just a pronouncement, but taking action in terms of deploying a temporary fix to ensure that at least the road is possible to road users while the contractors are given, I mean, given the, the, the expedited action that is needed to, to fix that place before the flood comes. Now, Mr. Lopobiri, the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, MOSOP, you know, has warned the federal government of mass protest if it fails to complete the east-west road. And it's also asking the federal government to reinstate the construction company RCC. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm not involved deeply into who is doing the job. Like I said, that road, that stretch of the road, a part of it is given to Cetraco, uh, while the other, especially within the eastern flank, is given to RCC. These are companies that we all know that have capability. After Gilles Beja, these are the two main companies, especially within our area, that we know that has the capability to undertake the road. I think that is an issue of leadership and monitoring. If you give people a job, paying them billions without proper uh, uh, monitoring mechanism, people will go with your resources and your people suffer for it. The primary essence of any government is to ensure that citizens' well-being are are taken seriously. And when the, the, the current minister took on with his, his, his new strides, Nigerians were happy because one, he understood his area 
and he, he prefers quality to just getting the roads done. That is the hope everybody is in them. But those new uh, 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 hopes from, uh, uh, from the new beginning are beginning to, to evaporate. And that's not good for our nation, especially in the Niger Delta where we are grappling with so much economic and uh, uh, insecurity activities that is affecting the oil production already. It's not good for our people. And what could be the consequences of not attending to this road, especially at this time in uh, the flood season and with the rainy season? Uh, do you have faith that the NDDC, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Works, will actually stick to their word and complete this project in due time? Well, I do hope that the NDDC would keep to their, their promise in terms of providing that quick fix. But let me tell you this clearly. That road project is a primary responsibility of the Federal Minister of Works. And NDDC is only intervening because there's a gruesome experience people are passing through. So as an interventionist agency, we are to cry to them to intervene to provide a temporary fix. What has been expected is to complete, especially that, those very bad spots to allow vehicular movement while the, 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 the Federal Minister of, of Works provide the needed resources and given this to, to companies that have the capability to run this pro, uh, project before the, the flood comes. August is just by the corner. So I'm confident that the NDDC will provide a temporary fix. Remember, NDDC is, is coordinating a Niger Delta Stakeholders Economic and Security Summit that is happening in Port Harcourt. I know part of the compelling reasons why I had to lead a delegation to the NDDC is that if these temporary fix are not given to that road, that, pro that project will fail because there's no access route anywhere else people will get to Port Harcourt. The, only, we, I mean, the, the only road by which... Sorry to interrupt you, but we're completely out of time. Mr. Yeah. Jonathan Lukwobri, President of Joy Youth Council, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Mm -hmm.